moments. Oh, that sounds cool, but I think we should also go down the rabbit hole of Melanie Klein. You okay, know. you're going to talk object relations. Object with us relations, now, right and now. Melanie okay, Klein. Get ready for that. So the, 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 this is one of the things that's about Melanie and Melanie Klein. If you go back and read some Melanie Klein, some of that stuff is just just really way out there. Like that. Um, um, and, but what one of the things she brings up is the first art object is mom. Okay. And mom what? is both the first old yeller, the first romantic comedy, but also the first horror movie we see. Okay. And so incorporated right, in that is the notion that, you know, and Klein talks about how there are things inside mom that we'd like to have. We don't know what they are. There are ways in which she comes and goes. There is a capricious element to her connection to us. Her interests move elsewhere. And so there are feelings of, uh, of shame and anger and degradation. And there is this cat by the name of Julia Kristeva, who oh, sort of okay. takes from she she takes from uh, Melanie Klein, and she talks about the notion of the abject. And she says that part of what Mom does for us and society in general to define who we are, we have to we have to not own or disown parts of ourselves. And so there are elements of us, um, like um, um, I mean, if you ever thought about the human body, it's pretty gross. There's lots of horrible, disgusting things going on at all times. Yes. There are. Okay. And uh, we have to quickly, to define ourselves in a positive sense, we, we quickly uh, label parts of ourselves that, we, that we, we, have, we need to disown to have, so that there has to be a negative to be a positive. And so there are tremendous elements of us that are, that are considered the abject, right? Mm-hmm. And a wonderful example of, what, of, of the abject, and Zizek talks about this, is, I may have mentioned before too, but... Think about it. Okay. Think about the um, n- the amount of saliva you swallow every day. Um, can I not think <laughs> about that? Because I, I, my guess is it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. So if you just take a small bit of that, just a glass full, and over five or ten minutes, just spit it into a cup. Right. And then try to swallow it. No. <laughs> uh, no, it's not, it's not that good. would not right? be. But I know we're okay. Keep going though. So, I got so, it. I got so, the and idea, even the, the thought of that of it all, generates yeah. standards of nausea. So there's this in 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 horror. There's a a return of of the parts we've disowned. I mean, if you think about horror movies, often have people getting cut up, gore, vomit, all the very things that you know. Um, yeah, uh, lots of blood. Blood. I mean, even if you've ever watched um, Silence of the Lambs, there's a point where. Uh, ejaculate gets thrown at uh, Agent Starling. So you can't think of a single emission or a, a bodily emission that we don't have some sort of ambivalence or conflict with that doesn't find its way into a horror film. Okay. And so, w- according to Christopher, um, we need the occasional rendezvous with disowned parts of ourselves to generate some sort of homeostasis. So it's like we watch horror films in some ways to become reacquainted, at least temporarily, with parts of ourselves that we know but we don't own, right? Right. And there's a whole genre, and it's 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 really taken off of the body horror, you know, where, you know, Alien is a wonderful example of of early body horror. Right, um, right, right, right. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that movie, that that, the, that Alien movie. I think where I the, have. The thing goes, Bursting out of the you know, person, yes, and running across around. That, that's a wonderful and example, and Christopher even talks about that. That um, this is an example of of the abject something inside of us, you know. And it, she draws a connection between uh, uh, all sorts of things, even sexuality. There's a way in which um, we are um, um, sexuality owns us. When teenagers suddenly hair starts popping up everywhere, you suddenly start having all these weird urges and all these sort of things start to happen. That's a little like the alien that popped out of that guy's chest. Mm-hmm. There are parts of us that just go boom, right? Right. And uh, Christopher and talks about And it's lifelong, too. It continues as right, you get into a uh, uh, later age, I understand. And when you start getting older, and then yes. the body horror is real, right? Yes. Like, uh, uh, unfortunately, as we get a little older, yes, right, there are a lot just, of those you know, things coming back. Yeah, yeah, you know, you got, you know, you got like, you know... Things start to sag, you know. Hair starts to grow in different places. It does, it does, yeah. It's <laughs> exactly. like, you know, you wake up and you've got like, you know, it, 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 these things happen. Another film that sort of, uh, that really connects with this notion of the abject. Ever see that movie? Not the original black and white one, but the John Carpenter, The Thing movie. Yes, of course. And 
remember it's like all about bodies that turn them inside and themselves inside out uh there's even a scene where they're doing the um the coating, what do you call it, with um, the defibrillator thing. Right. And suddenly the guy's chest, uh, uh, he goes into the guy's chest, and the guy's chest grows teeth and then bites off his hands. Yes. <laughs> Remember that scene? Spoiler alert, I guess, yeah. for uh, some of the that, that, that And then, then the guy the stands movie. up and he's got blood squirting out of these stumps. Ah, <laughs> right, you know. right, right. So in that single nice moment. Nice special effects, but. Uh, <laughs> it was. That's then, the only way I can get through it. It's considered to not be. But see, real no, notice, so effects. you have to generate enough distance. So you generate, you, you move. Um, you, you, you are, um, you, you, your ego quickly does its thing and draws a line in the sand. Right. But even in the act of doing that, there's something that could be considered healthy. That you are exercising your ego and your capacity for drawing a line in the sand and generating a boundary between you and the rest of the planet. And that movie allows you a chance to do that. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. allows you a chance you to play with those sorts of moments. And uh, embedded in both aliens and the thing are a relationship with our body that we, we're not completely conscious of.